Hi everyone, my name is Erin Elizabeth Wernberg. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today. Welcome back if you've been here before and welcome if you are new here. Today is the solstice. So if you are in the Northern hemisphere, we have the summer solstice, which marks the longest day of the year. And if you're in the Southern hemisphere, you have the winter solstice, which marks the shortest day of the year. So solstice is a time where we're really getting into the peak of the season. So we're really getting into either extreme heat in the summer, or extreme cold in the winter, depending again where you are in the world. So the solstice is a reminder for us that in all of life cycles and in things we go through, there is a time for something to be like peak awareness, peak intensity, peak feeling in our life. And then, you know, things taper off and, um, cycles change and things move so this is a time for us to reflect on what is really like if you're in summer solstice what is really coming to fruition what is really like the bounty is here the harvest is here and if you're in winter solstice thinking about what is really taking time to rest to go inward to relax to sleep to take a break you know as we cycle through more of um, get ready after the cycle to move into more spring and fall which is you know not as extreme climax feelings emotions of these types of things so for today's tarot reading, I'm just going to give you any messages that are going to come through the cards, just some little reminders, anything that wants to come out, anything that might be helpful. Um, they're just quick little short readings today. So I have four groups for you today. So you can pick by the card you can see, the number, group one, two, three, or four, anything that resonates for you. And when you're ready, all the timestamps are below and I will see you at the reading that you chose. Hi everyone, welcome. This is for everyone who picked group number one. So you all pick the card, step out of your comfort zone, North Node. So if you're not familiar with your North Node um, in your birth chart, so we, we all have a North Node and our South Node. And our South Node is energy that's like familiar to us, that's we can tend to overuse it, we can default into that. And because it feels familiar, but our North Node is really where our soul growth happens. There are these things that push us into doing things that uh, we wouldn't normally do. It's things that maybe don't feel the most familiar, but we know once we do them, then we can get to the next level outside of our comfort zone. We can do these things that feel really good for us, that feel really affirming, um, that help us, again, grow our soul in that way. And so for this card, uh, North Node, step out of your comfort zone. I'm getting a lot of energy of, you know, sometimes when we talk about get out of your comfort zone, it does mean actions we can take. You know, it means like, okay, well, I've never done this thing before, so I'm, I'm going to do it. Or I you know, it's going to be out of my comfort zone to set this boundary or do this particular thing. Or, you know, there are physical reaction, physical reaction, physical reality things we can do to get out of our comfort zone. But what I'm really hearing for you, group one, is like step out of your comfort zone in terms of like the thoughts you think. So what's the story I'm telling myself? How, how do I envision myself? How do I see myself? What limiting beliefs do I see about myself that I can let go of? Or what story am I telling myself about myself that I can let go of what just feels like you know maybe I don't really need to believe this anymore what feels like okay this was something that I believed about myself for a long long time but again maybe it's not the most helpful thing to believe anymore maybe it's a story I can let go of so of course if this resonates for you in terms of like taking a different action or pushing yourself to do something new or just trying to get out of your comfort zone like you know within reason you don't want to go so far that you shut down right but take it take it if it resonates that way but a message I'm really getting is you know what's a what's a new way you can see yourself what's a different way you can start to talk to yourself what's like you know okay well that's just the way I am what's the way you can kind of soften that and rewrite that right because nothing is set in stone about the way we see ourselves we can always be more compassionate and loving and kind to ourselves when we want to and so for group one again I'm getting the message a lot of you know step out of your comfort zone in terms of like um you know, the way, the way you allow yourself to be seen, the way you see the world, your relationship with God, your relationship with, you know, like, oh, am I being punished or is this whatever, you know, just seeing, see, just take it, take it how it resonates and trust what comes up. Maybe you want to do some free writing or journaling or just some deep breathing around this, what, see what comes up for you, but, you know, step out your comfort zone just in terms of the stories you're telling yourself, how you feel about yourself, these things you've been, you know, saying, well, this is just how I am. This is what it's going to be. This is how it always is. You know, can you, can you touch a little bit of like a different story and then, you know, give yourself, give your soul permission to like open up into that. That's what I'm getting. Okay. So I'm going to pick um, three tarot cards for you, and then I'll just do a few Oracle cards and then that will be that for this reading. Okay. So group one, 
Wow. <laughs> okay, so I think it's really time for you to grow and expand group one, okay? So we have the hangman, the star, and the nine of cups. I mean, very beautiful. So this, the energy I'm really getting from this, this hangman is like, stop playing yourself. It's like, um, you know, stop being in the standstill energy where you feel like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. You know, it's like a lot of times when we're, when nothing's happening and we feel like totally powerless and totally like nothing's going my way. I have to wait for this thing to happen, right? That's when we can give our power away. And, you know, a lot of times we go through things and we're like, oh, well, you know, I just, I can't wait for these circumstances to change. I can't wait. And we try really hard to manipulate the circumstances when it's like, well, maybe the circumstances are the way they are so that we can change and then the circumstances will change. Okay. So I think again, um, just really reflecting this energy of stepping out of your comfort zone of like a belief you have about yourself, a story you're telling yourself about yourself, how you feel about yourself. So this is like, you know, if you feel like I've tried everything, nothing's happening then like, what can you start to shift and change and believe about yourself? What's a new story you can tell yourself? Um, and especially because this goes right into the star, what story you can tell yourself that's really nourishing, that's really loving, that's really um, soothing, like really just like a lot of nourishing, soothing, kind, gentle energy you can, you can do for yourself here, okay? So this hangman into the star is like, it's time to take a break. Maybe you've been at like a standstill, maybe you're waiting for something to happen. Maybe it feels like you're not making any progress towards a certain thing you want, okay? Then the star here is really about, you know, how can you tell a more nourishing story? How can you do something more loving and kind for yourself? And that doesn't mean, you know, sometimes when we say like self-care or being nourishing or whatever for yourself, sometimes people think that means like don't do anything or take some time to rest, which it could be, right? But sometimes a nourishing thing for yourself is like, okay, I'm going to be disciplined enough now to go for a walk every day, for example, right? So it could be taking action. It could be doing that. But these cards are really just about, you know, what's a way you can nourish yourself and pour your power and your energy back into yourself in a way that's like making you feel more clear and making you feel like, you know, again, stepping out of your comfort zone. Maybe it's a pattern you've had for a really long time that you need to rewrite, that you need to do something different. Okay, that might be going on uh with this so how can you do that a little differently because then we have the nine of cups and so that's wishes fulfilled so this card represents wishes fulfilled so i feel like to me it really speaks to you know when you really do the work when you really show up for yourself when you really just change your inner reality obviously like okay we're not stupid we know physical reality does affect us there are things in the world that we can't just pretend like aren't happening okay but this nine of cups really is about um you know, having a wish fulfilled. So it really does, it really happens. Like we don't know it until we do it. But when we change the way we speak to ourselves, when we change the way we just offer more nourishment and loving kindness to ourselves, things aren't as intense. We don't react as intensely. We can be a little bit softer with ourselves. And then we're a little bit softer with like our circumstances in the world around us. So I feel like this is really saying that's what your soul is asking for right now with this solstice. You know, how can you really give into some of that nourishing energy how can you like stop saying like I can't do anything I can't do anything maybe you can't do anything with certain circumstances right but you always have a choice how kind you are to yourself how loving you are to yourself how much you know you like literally hug yourself and say I love you I'm here for you I'm not gonna run away I'm not gonna leave you I am gonna stay with you right you have a choice with that and then all of that again can shift you into this energy of just feeling like loved and cared for and um you know, just giving yourself some of that gentle energy is like really, really what I'm feeling um, for you for group one. So again, that comfort zone could just be stepping out of that comfort zone of like just being a little more kind and loving to yourself. Because, um, you know, most of us went into being a little hard or not kind to ourselves out of survival mode, out of, um, you know, that's what the world reflects back to us, a lot to do, you know, so this is, um, you know, just giving yourself permission to be more loving and kind and accepting to yourself because there's one person in the world you have to deal with for your whole life, you know, it's you. Um, okay, so we have share your voice, come out of the cave, persecution expression. So I feel like uh, for group one, part of this could be like, maybe there's a shame story or maybe there's like 
something that you are holding against yourself. And that's why maybe you aren't able to touch like some of this nourishing energy for yourself. So it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to like make a social media post about it. If you don't want, it could be writing in your diary. It could be sharing with your therapist, sharing with a close friend, you know, finding a group of people who support you, you know, in something this particular way, but share your voice, you know, there's really nothing worse than like holding something inside of us. It's like that saying, if you ever heard it, our secrets make us sick, right? So when you don't share how you're feeling or share what's going on or share what's going on within you, that can really, you know, mess us up and make us feel not the best. So share your voice coming out here. So finding a community, um, again, or just between you and God, um, could be journaling, could be praying, you know, just making sure you have an outlet for all these emotions that are um, bottled up inside of us is really really important uh, to be able to move forward with these things. Okay, and then we have new beginnings. Take this as an opportunity to rise from the ashes stronger and more determined. So I think a really healthy um, skill in life is like knowing how to take an L, knowing how to take your loss and just keep it moving, okay? So if something, hasn't gone your way, if you feel like, you know, you've been pushing and trying really hard, um, you know, you do, you don't fail when something doesn't go your way, you fail when you stop trying. So this is a card to really remind you that you do have a choice to have a new beginning, you do have a choice to, um, you know, take this as an opportunity to rise from the ashes stronger and more determined. It's like you, um, you know, it's like they say obstacles are the way and something not going your way doesn't mean that, you um, it doesn't mean it's not working out for your highest good, right? It just means, okay, well, that wasn't the way, so I'm going to keep going. It's like the, the problem is when you don't keep going. The problem is when you, when you, what? The problem isn't when, okay, we're just going to start over. The problem isn't when you stop trying. The problem is when you stop trying, okay? So you are not in control of how things unfold. You're not in control of controlling all the factors of everything, right? So it's just up to you if you decide if you keep going or not. So new beginnings. So just remember like every single day, you can choose to keep trying, you can choose to keep going, you can choose to tell a new story, you can choose to step out of your comfort zone, right? So just one day at a time, just moving forward with that um, is uh, how, you're gonna, how you're gonna move through these things. But feast on the nectar of life. So again, I feel like this is just this energy of like, you know, nectar, just really nourishing, really sweet, really gentle. So I think just really, you know, if you can like change the way you speak to yourself, the way you talk to yourself, and if you can change like the ways that you're seeing things in life. So even if you just find like a small moment of gentleness, of kindness, of peace, of whatever going on in your day-to-day -day life, um, you know, just really cherishing like all these beautiful moments we have access to, that's going to change a lot of your energy. Like, again, it doesn't negate hard things we're going through, but if we can find moments of like beauty and um, peace and just things that are really affirming to us on the soul level, like that can really change a lot of um, a lot of our energy and a lot of our way we're looking at the world, you know, so feast on the nectar of life. That means, you know, just really cherish everything that that is around us um, in that way. Okay, and then we'll close with uh, one affirmation. So we have healing heartbreak, my heart will love again. Beautiful, so obviously, um, if this is a romantic relationship, um, you know, maybe this is the comfort zone that you need to believe in, of course, but this can also be, you know, sometimes we get our heart broken by the circumstances of life, by our ego attachments to things that, oh, I thought it had to be this particular thing in this particular way, but you know, my heart will love again. Um, you know, just again, keep trying new beginnings, speak your voice, you will love again, your heart will heal itself, I promise, you know, just keep going. That's everything I have for you. If you ever want any more information about me, all that is linked below. Um, thank you so much. Happy solstice. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Hi, everyone. Welcome. This is for everyone who picked group number two. So you all pick the card time to breathe out beautiful. Okay. So this is a reminder that, um, you know, we all are where we are on our path and that's okay. You know, there's so many things that the ego wants to judge like, oh, well, I'm not at, I didn't reach this goal yet, or this thing didn't happen for me yet, or I used to have this thing and now I lost it, or it used to be like this and now it's not right. So time to take time to breathe out is really just like, <sighs> actually take a deep breath. You know, deep breathing is very soothing. It's very calming, but symbolically, of course, it represents, you know, like 
again, we all are where we are and that's okay. Like you don't have to have the marathon finished. You don't have to be at the peak of life, right? All of life is up and down forever and ever and ever. No matter what stays, there will always be something else that I need to have this or I need to do this or I need this thing to happen, okay? So take time to breathe out is really, you know, just know that every, we have to go through everything we have to go through to get to every new thing that we want. So if you're in a cycle where it feels like, what is happening? Why isn't anything working out for me? You know, I'm in this phase like this, right? It's like resisting what is, is not going to help you move through the process of it faster. Okay. So take time to breathe out. Sometimes, you know, it's like they say things get better before they get worse when you're working on healing or growing or changing. Cause you actually take time to look at things. You take time to like take inventory to be like, okay, this is what's going on. And this is what needs to happen now. And this is, you know, you're not like in la la land, ignoring everything all the time. Okay. So take time to breathe out again. It's just a reminder. I'm just getting like, just do some deep breathing. Okay. If you're watching this, um, but just remember that, you know, we all are where we are and that's okay. And like, again, life is not, it's not this steady incline of going through life, you know, like that's, that's what the ego wants us to believe, but it's not like that. Okay. It really is just about taking things as they come, doing one day at a time, moving through things again, as they show up, as, as we're moving forward, as, you know, just allowing all of these things to um, add up and know that, you know, these things do add up and there's nothing that, <sighs> like you can't, you can't skip steps. You just have to keep going with it. And again, you have to trust that like taking time to breathe out does mean, you know, giving things the time to, um, like sometimes you're just in a phase where you have to pause and you just have to let things recollect and you just have to take inventory again. And you just have to like move forward, uh, one thing at a time, one day at a time. And like, you might not feel like you're on top of the world, but again, this is just, it's part of the process. It's part of what we have to do, um, to move forward. Okay, I'm going to pick three tarot cards for you. Okay, so we have the Magician, Three of Pentacles, and Three of Wands. So I feel like here... Um, you know, this is a time to take stock. This is a lot of like, there's not really emotion on these two cards. So this is a time again, reflecting this time, take time to breathe out card. Like this is where you need to, um, like looking at these two cards, bookending your three cards, you need to take some time to pause and reflect and think about what's going on. What do I want? What, how do I want to move forward? What are my options? While also remembering that you do have a choice. Okay. So even if feel if something for you guys in group two like didn't work out the way you want or things aren't going the way you want or there's like you know something something that's happening that you can't control you still have choice on some level in terms of like how you want to show up how you want to be supported how you want to talk to yourself how you want to you know engage with the world like you have this choice um and so that three of wands also you know has to do with what, what choice do I want to make with that? And then we have this three of pentacles in the middle here. So this three of pentacles to me is about like relying on community and making things work with your community. So if you do, you know, need to take stock and decide what you want, like, do you have a support group? Can you talk to a trusted friend? Do you have like a group of people you can work with? Can you ask someone for advice? Who's maybe more further along the path than you and where you're trying to go, right? So these, these cards to me are really just like about emb embodying and embracing the energy of like, okay, if I know I have a choice on some level, right, you're not totally powerless. Um, who can I reach out to for support? How can I do it in community? I don't have to do it on my own. And then really being honest about what you want, you know, like, so I think sometimes when things don't go our way, we can get in our own head and we can be like, oh, well, I can't trust myself and I didn't want things to be this way. And so I can't trust myself to do anything and I'm never going to whatever again. Okay. So, but this is really reminding us that we do have our own agency. We all have our own power and there are resources for you to utilize and being self-reflective in this time of pause and like, you know, this taking time to breathe out that really shows us, you know, what we really want and where our energy is instead of feeling like, you know, I don't know what to do. I can't, I can't decide. I can't do anything. It really is important for us to sometimes, you know, if we do really believe that like rejection is protection and rejection is redirection, right? 
like just really taking inventory and taking stock instead of being so focused on like, well, it was supposed to go that way and be that thing and do this, whatever. And it's like, okay, well, just checking in with yourself and just asking yourself, you know, is that really what I want? Or is that just what I thought I wanted because of, you know, I had all these other attachments of it had to go this, this, in this particular way. So if you can give yourself permission to, um, you know, just be open to different possibilities, be open to different creative solutions, be open again to different things happening than, than what you thought. And, you know, seeing how it goes from there, seeing um, what comes up, seeing what guidance comes up. But again, knowing you have this power, you have this choice, um, you can reinvent yourself, redo your life, re, I mean, you don't have to do everything over again, okay. <laughs> but you can like, you can allow new energy to come into your life uh, as needed. Okay, you're not, you're not stuck. Um, no matter what gets taken away from you, as long as you have yourself and your relationship with God, you can, you can figure it out and you can start again. Okay, we have Council of Light, Divine Orchestration, Helpers in the Subtle Realm. So really beautiful. So I feel like, again, this is really mirroring that Three of Pentacles energy I was talking about. Um, so I was talking about in physical reality, but maybe, you know, you need to call on your angels, your spirit guides, your um, anyone, any type of like, like, don't try to figure this out on your own is basically what I'm saying. And so again, this is just a reminder that there are um, so many forces working for us on our behalf. There's so many things going on that we don't know about. Um, and again, just knowing, can you, a way that I always feel like guided and protected is if you just go out in nature and you see how many things are running at the same time and going at the same time to help, you know, keep this beautiful, delicate balance of ecosystem life that we have going on. So again, if you can really um, connect to that and trust in that and have faith in that, that can bring a little, um, it can bring some, some ease uh, into, into our life. Just remembering that, you know, we are cared for and guided and protected. Okay. And then we have trust, carnation. You can trust the people around you. They are earth angels sent to give you the guidance you seek. So, okay. So the other side of this card, like I was talking about, so you have help in, you know, physical reality and non-physical reality. So again, take it how it resonates for you. Um, you know, angels or other beings or other energies or even loved ones, you know, who have gone to the other side, like, you know, the, all of that energy is here for you. And then this is saying you can really trust and support on your physical reality community, people that you love, um, and maybe people you don't know yet, you know, so, but those people are there for you. There are people who do want to support you and take care of you and um, care for you. And so really trusting that. Um, and then just even when I heard the word trust, I just heard like trust in life, trust in the unfolding of your life. You're going to be okay. This is all part of the process um, was also what I heard. So that card, uh, the affirmation is talking about people in your life, but um, for me, when I saw the word trust, you know, it also very much meant trusting, uh, trusting the circumstances, trusting God, trusting unfolding, um, trusting, trusting these, these invisible things that we can't see. And then, you know, it's like once it happens and then like, you know, you look back five years later and you're like, oh yeah, that's why that had to be that way. Or that's why this had to be this way, you know? So, you know, there was a time when that happened before and there will be a time with this particular time where you're like, oh yeah, that's why that thing had to happen this way or be this particular situation. Sacred space. Okay. So I feel like um, this is, I always read this card as like, making a sacred space within yourself um, and knowing that like, again, you can connect to your divine support, to your energy, taking time to breathe out. Like, again, I'm just getting, I know that was a metaphorical meaning, but what I'm getting for you guys in group two is like making the sacred, like just really breathing out, really taking time to breathe out, really taking time to tune in with yourself and making the sacred space within yourself so you can feel supported and connected to your um, these other realms, these other things outside of you and just trusting the ways that, you know, um, you, it's so important for us to stay with ourselves and to build this like sacred space where, again, if we're thinking about decision-making where we can hear guidance, right? We can hear, okay, this is the action I want to take. This is the path I'm being encouraged to go on. This is the things I'm being encouraged to pursue, right? So that's the energy, that's the energy, um, that we want to look at. Okay, and then I'll close with one affirmation card for you, group two. Ooh, 
rewriting the subconscious. The more I embrace feeling good, the less often I will feel bad. Okay, so good and bad, we're gonna <laughs> take those words with a grain of salt here, okay? Because I'm not, um, you know, I don't subscribe to the just vibrate higher and everything's fine type of thing, okay? So we're gonna be gentle here with like good and bad, but this is, I feel like, you know, maybe some, some different words we can say with this is the more I embrace how I feel, the less often I will feel disconnected, right? So, so many times it's just like about when we silence our own energy or when we're taking on other people's energy more than like feeling good or feeling bad. Okay, so I think, you know, rewriting the subconscious, this card can just be a reminder that the more that I give myself permission to feel my feelings, the more I give myself permission to listen to myself and listen to my own guidance instead of this outside noise, that's when, you know, you can really move into this energy of, of moving with like, you know, emptying out all these other voices and all this other energy uh, instead of yourself. Okay, that's everything I have for you. If you ever want any more information about me, all that is linked below. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today. Uh, happy solstice and I hope you have a wonderful day. Hi everyone, welcome. This is for everyone who picked group number three. So you'll pick the card. This energy is gaining momentum or the energy is gaining momentum. Okay, so this card is really about, you know, having faith in the process. If you've really been like putting in a lot of work and trying to make a lot of things happen and you don't see any like fruition, um, anything coming to fruition in physical reality, this is just a reminder that, you know, when you, when you plant a seed, if you think about gardening or anything, like you don't dig it up every day to see if it's sprouting, to see what's going on, to see whatever, you know, same thing with like a watch pot doesn't boil. Um, you know, there's just so many things that we think, okay, well, is it happening yet? It's happening yet. And we can downplay so many things that if there isn't like an immediate affirmation in physical reality that something's happening, then we feel like it's not. So the energy is gaining momentum is, can also be a reminder that, you know, like, we can tend to want to be like, oh my God, this is, I don't know, let's say you're trying to get a new job. You know, this is the interview that got me the job and I'm so happy and I'm so proud and I did it and here we go and look at what I did, all these things, right? But what, what and so we can focus on that, like that's the final step that got us the thing. But that step is also just one step with like 800 other steps behind it, right? And so it's like, okay, all those other jobs I didn't get the interview for, or I, you know, I did, but then I didn't get the job or I had to look at my resume or I had to write this cover letter or I had to do this or I had to whatever, right? So all of those steps are momentum that built up to get to this thing. It's just, that's the one that had the final action attached to it. So don't downplay all the ways you're showing up in your day-to-day -day life, all the ways that, you know, we think like, oh, it's just this one big moment when everything changes. And that's true, but it has so much momentum behind it. So the energy is gaining momentum as a reminder, like don't downplay all the effort you've been putting in, all the ways you've been showing up for yourself. So many times that's just things like shifting reality and, you know, shuffling and getting back to focus and back to basics and all of that. So energy is gaining momentum is really just a reminder that like, Again, don't downplay these like small, subtle, day-to-day, -day, tedious, like things that we have to do over and over again, because those add up and that's what ends up changing things. It's just, we think like, you know, well, this is the one thing that did it because this is the one thing that, you know, brought me my desired outcome, but, you know, all these other things um, had to add up to get you there. So the energy is gaining momentum. Don't stop if you're working towards something, if you don't see results yet, you know, just like blinders on, um, keep going, keep the path, you can get there. Just, you know, it's more important for consistency um, on the smaller scale will always get you to where you wanna be going eventually. You know, it's like, it's, it's more about if you stay the path and keep going than if you like do it for one day and oh, I didn't get it, so I'm gonna stop now. So this is your group three. If you are really working towards something, it's really important for you to um, stay focused and trust the momentum you're building and trust the path you're going and trust that you know all these things are adding up even when it doesn't feel like it. It's just sometimes doing something different or choosing a different path it takes a little more time and energy um, than not. Okay, I'm gonna pull three tarot cards for you. Uh, for group three. Okay, <laughs> so we have the chariot, then the five of wands, then the high priestess. So 
I feel like, yeah, this is really the vibe I'm getting for you guys in group three of this energy of gaining momentum. So we have the chariot, which is about forward motion. It is about slow and steady forward motion, but it is forward motion, okay? So trusting, you know, trust in the direction you're moving and the action you're taking, not the speed that you're taking it or the speed that things are happening, okay? So the chariot really is about, you know, slow and steady wins the race. Here I go. Do I have faith in myself? And then this five of wands conflict, I think is really coming out to remind, like, not to remind you, but to know that when you feel discomfort, when things aren't happening in the way we want or the time we want or the whatever we want, this five of wands can be a reminder that like, it's not your fault and you're not in control of every single thing of these things. So if you feel like this internal conflict and chaos of like, I'm moving, why isn't something happening? Why isn't something happening? Why isn't something happening? Okay. This is like, this is natural, you know, like when we're when we're trying to force our will and our timing and our whatever, whenever we see something that's unacceptable to us and to our ego, that's when this comes out. And that's when we're like, has to be my way, has to be my will, has to be my timeline, has to be my exact thing. Okay. But like, if you can just keep this path of the slow and steady chariot and moving forward one day at a time, one thing at a time, like, again, all of that adds up. Um, even if it doesn't feel like it, because then we have this high priestess energy, love to see her. So it's just a reminder that like, your soul is, your soul doesn't have these ego mind attachments. Your soul is moving on the path. Your soul knows what it's doing. Like you are moving in a way that just like is adding up. And like the mind cares about so many things that like the heart and the soul don't even care about at all. You know, it's like, there's so many things that we're like, oh, it has to be this exact way. And this, this, whatever. So many things the ego sees as punishment are actually like very nourishing and helpful gifts to the soul to get us to where we want to go. So this is just a reminder that again, there are things taking place beyond physical reality that are happening that we can tap into and feel cared for and provided for. And also that you have support from the other side. You know, we have these other realms, we have these, these guides and these beings and our angels and, you know, whatever you believe in, whatever your belief system, there is something on the other side, giving you love and nourishment and care and like guiding you along that way. So even if there is slow and steady, you know, and there is, you know, conflict coming up, actually, again, this sounds like <laughs> counterintuitive, but when conflict comes up, it means we've moved out of our comfort zone and we're trying something new. So when things like don't feel right, or we're getting our footing right, if we know how everything goes all the time, exactly, there's not going to be any conflict. We're not going to be like, oh, what do I do? How do I figure this out? Because we know how everything is. So conflict is a sign that you are growing. You're trying to find your footing. You're trying to figure out what's going on. And then this high priestess, again, is a reminder that like you do have this tether to the other side to help you and move you forward. And also like, don't rely on your own strength. Like you can ask God for help. You know, you can ask God for like the ability to keep going. So many people who seem like so strong and have this endurance and have this thing going because they get poured in by the earth, by God, by their angels, by, you know, whatever, like this energy over and over again um, to help them keep moving on the path that that is right for them and feels good for them instead of, you know, rel relying on their own strength. You can rely on your own strength, but know that your strength gets re-poured into and refilled up from, from God. And so remembering, you know, like you, God never leaves you. God never doesn't want to help us. It's like, we, we turn off the connection. We turn off that, that, uh, you know, that energetic pull between us and God. And so remembering, like, we do have the power to tap into that energy, um, to support ourselves is like really, really what, uh, just a good reminder again, like just ask God for the strength to get you through one day at a time to get you through, you know, some of these hardships and these things that are, are challenging, like as part of, part of earth. Okay. Then we have the card, take a break, a life's work, not a season, get off the treadmill. So I feel like, so similar similar waxing moon images here on this card and this card, as you can see. Um, and even on the high priestess down here, we got one. Okay. So I feel like this is just a reminder that, you know, if you have been, this is just really energy of what I'm getting of like, the energy is gaining momentum is like, stop forcing stuff. Okay. So get off the treadmill to me. 
um take a break means like don't just try to like you can't control everything you can't make things happen faster than they're gonna happen you can't make you know if you're doing your part and showing up and like nourishing yourself and giving yourself kindness you can't force something to happen so take a break it doesn't mean that you give up it doesn't mean you're not invested it doesn't mean you don't want what you want anymore take a break means you know literally what it means take a break it means kind of loosen your grip a little bit let things unfold a little bit let there be space and permission for, um, you know, these things to come through in a way that, uh, you know, maybe you, you've been blocking yourself or you thought, you know, okay, well, it can't, can't be this way. Or if you're trying to micromanage every single piece of this unfolding, right? Like life is not supposed to be like that. God is very merciful, compassionate, loving. God wants things for us and they just happen and usually not our timeline and usually, through ways that we cannot control them. And so when we're trying to do that, that's when we can cause ourselves a lot of, a lot of stress. And again, like when you white knuckle it, or when you like try to force something, like you just end up harming yourself because we, we get so caught up in trying to control all these things we can't control instead of just accepting and focusing on nourishing ourselves and saying, how can I be of service in the meantime? Um, how can I you know, what can I offer to the world during this time instead of being so focused on like, I need this, this, and this thing to happen um, with that. Okay, then we have let go of anxiety, lavender. So calm your nerves and you'll be able to hear the voice of your angels. So again, I don't want to dismiss anyone with this card. Like obviously <laughs> there are certain things with anxiety that we can't control, but this is, you know, sometimes we don't need to make it worse for ourselves. So if this is again, like taking a break just can you offer some soothing energy to yourself can you do some things that make you feel grounded and connected can you do some things that you know like instead of can you like get off the hamster wheel of this mind running 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 right like overthinking by itself doesn't really um you know cause us that much stress it's like this addiction to thoughts that are so challenging to us um causes us stress so if you can let go of some of those narratives and instead like ask for some um loving guidance and peace to come in if you can like go for a walk spend time in nature um pray meditate journal read a book read calming you know anything that feels good to you but something like you need to calm yourself and learn how to self-soothe so that you can hear this guidance uh that's that's meant for you to come through and then we have truth be told coming out again another waxing moon image here so like very very strong if you have like rolled your eyes at any point in this reading or been like, yeah, okay, that's true for everyone, but not for me, just the, all these moons coming out, this is for you. Okay. So truth be told, this is just a reminder that, you know, truth will persevere. You will get there. You will get to the other side. Um, you know, truth will set you free. So just being honest about what you can control, what you can't control, how you can't show up, how you can't show up. Um, you know, and if you, if you've been lying to yourself, which like no judgment, we do that to protect ourselves sometimes, but practicing honesty with ourselves and with God, that is more freeing than like pretty much anything else um, in the world. So just really honoring that. Truthfulness. Okay. And then I'm going to close. We have one affirmation, unhooking the past. There's nothing to regret when I learned from my past. So I love this card and I think it's true. And, you know, um, it just reminds me of that saying, suffering ends when meaning begins. So just remembering that, like, you know, maybe something from your past that you like, maybe that's why you're trying to rush through something, or maybe we're trying to force something to happen because, you know, you feel like, oh, well, I should have learned this thing from my past or this thing should have happened or whatever, but there is nothing to regret when I learn from my past. None of us are perfect. None of us know exactly what we're doing. All of us make up, make up, make mistakes and hopefully make up um, myself included very, very much. You know, I wouldn't know anything I know unless I had gone through a lot of trials and tribulations and messing up in my life. So that's very, very, very true. So if anything, if you take anything from this reading, you can just give yourself some love and care and kindness and just offer yourself some compassion for yourself um, and trust that, you know, when you know better, you do better. And, and that's part of life. Okay, that's everything I have for you. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today. If you ever want any more information about me, all that is linked below. Thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day. Hi everyone, welcome. This is for everyone who picked group number four. So you all pick the card, don't let your past hold you back, South Node. So if you are not familiar um, with your birth chart, your astrological birth chart, we all have a North Node and our South Node. And our South Node is kind of like our overdeveloped energies. They're 
things that we um, develop habitually from the past. If you, if it's in your belief system, also as some people say, it's from your past lives. So it's just energy that we've uh, kind of rely on without thinking subconsciously. We just act it out over and over and over again. And then our North Node is like the energy we want to move into. It's energy we want to think about. It's energy we want to, you know, embrace so that our soul can expand the way it wants to expand. So don't let your past hold you back. South node, I feel like group four, this is really, it's a time for you to break a habit. And some of these habits we have, they can be so programmed into us or so practiced that we're like, I can, who am I if I don't do that thing? Who am, like, it can be an identity crisis, right? Like, who am I if I don't do that thing? Who am I if this particular thing isn't happening for me? Who am I if I don't, you know, have this exact way to react in my life or exist in this whatever? So don't let your past hold you back. I feel like group four, this is really saying if you've been getting frustrated or it's a lot, a lot of this energy is also like, oh my God, I have to deal with this again. This is coming up again. You know, that can be a sign for just to, even if it's not something you've been doing wrong, you've been accountable. It could just be a sign for you to like be kinder to yourself, to stop blaming everything on yourself, you know? So don't let your past hold you back. You know, you can really think about like, it's safe for me to release the past. It's safe for me to be a new person. It's safe for me to choose a different habit, a different action, right? So don't let your past hold you back. Just really letting yourself, um, you know, move into that energy of just like, it's okay for me to let something go that I thought I could never live without, or I thought I couldn't be if I wasn't this, this, and this thing, you know? And so let your, let these things teach you and then give yourself permission to let it go. And maybe something that it's teaching you is just, I don't have to hold on to stuff anymore, right? You don't have to find a lesson in every single thing. You can let things go and then be like, oh, okay, that was my lesson. Now I'm going to move on with my life the end, you know, like not making everything mean something and not making everything mean, you know, finding all this meaning in everything. Like that's unhealthy sometimes too. So not letting your past hold you back and giving yourself permission to grow and change. You know, it can be, you can even affirm yourself, like I'm safe. It's only change. I'm safe. I'm only growing. I'm safe. I'm only becoming the better version of myself, the next version of myself. So there's just a lot of this energy of you know, if you need to let something go, this is the time to think about that. And, you know, you can be someone totally different. Like you don't have to keep recreating these patterns or these habits or these thoughts or whatever, no matter how many years you've practiced them or lived them or had them be part of your life, right? There is, there is time and space for you to let those things go and give yourself permission to, to be different, to be someone else, to to move into that energy of, um, you know, you don't, you don't have to let that define who you are anymore. You're like, I just, this is just how I am. This is just whatever, you know, you don't, you don't need to keep perpetuating that anymore. Okay. And then on the first thing from that, it comes from willingness. So willingness is the first step to be able to, you know, allow that to be different. Okay. I'm going to pull uh, three tarot cards for you. Group four, and then we'll look at some Oracle cards. Okay, so I feel like you, um, so we have the four of cups, two of wands and page of pentacles. So I feel like uh, group four, this energy of don't let your past hold you back. I feel like you've been getting fed up with maybe yourself. The good news is when you get sick of your own shit, then that's when you're like, okay, it's time for me to change. I'm ready now to move forward to be different. And that's what this four of cups is really saying. You know, this is like looking at this in terms of like, there's something being offered to you. There's something that's like, you know, you could choose this habit again. You could choose this thing again, but there's you with your arms crossed. Like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. Even though I've done it 8 million times in a row down here. Right. I want something different. I don't want to receive this. I want to be different. Right. So the first thing is willingness. The first thing is recognizing the pattern. Awareness is the first step, which is amazing. So maybe if you're in that place, even when I was talking in the beginning, explaining this card, um, you know, this could be energy around like, just whatever I spoke and whatever came up for you, trust that, trust the body wisdom that exposed something to you that shared something with you, right? So this energy is really about like, how can you um, 
trust that guidance that's coming through and trust like, okay, this is, this is showing up in this way. And just listening again to what your body's telling you, like, you don't need to keep, you don't need to keep doing this thing over and over and over again. You can be different and, you know, God can help us change like on the soul level. So we don't act out these certain things. Um, because then right next to that, we have this two of wands, which again is a reflective contemplative card. It's like, okay, do, how do I want to be different? What do I want to be different with? What is working for me? What is not working for me? So this two of wands is really, again, reflective energy, taking time to take inventory, taking time to be like, this works for me. This doesn't work for me. This is the thing I want to leave behind. This is the thing that I want to keep moving forward with. Um, Cause when you do that, this page of pentacles, I love this. This is like the seed of a new idea, right? This is the gift of something new coming in, some new awareness, something like coming in that can offer you, um, like, it's just, it's just the, it might not be the whole huge, like, okay, this is how I'm going to be totally different. And this is the way I'm going to change my whole life around, but this is just the seed of the new idea. So it's like, okay, well, I can just do this one tiny little thing differently than how I've been doing it. Or I can just do this one little action differently. And that will add up to these other areas in my life. Right. So if this, you know, this four of cups, just it's just this first willingness of like, okay, this particular thing isn't working for me. So what do I want to, what do I want to be different? How do I want to be different? And then giving yourself permission to kind of like accept that little seed and trust like, okay, you know, this is, this is the way it's going to go. This is just one, it just takes one little shift. You know, it's not, unless there's usually like an extreme situation in life, it's like the most, the things that stay with us long-term are like these subtle shifts that add up as we keep moving forward. Um, but again, this page of pentacles is just a reminder, like, trust one little plant of like something helpful or something changing um, going on in your life with that. And instead, you know, like trust that that will add up and that will be new habits that you keep doing over and over again, instead of like, oh, I need to change everything in my life overnight, but trusting, you know, this one little, this one little habit switch out um, and trusting that that will add up and that will, you know, help you guide you on the path to, you know, how you want to be different and who you want to be different and, you know, all of, all of those ways. And then we have answer the call. What is your soul calling you to do? So I feel like a lot of times we can hear the way things are not working for us uh, long before we take action. Okay. We can hear that. That's no judgment. I do that too. Okay. But like we can hear the ways it's like, this thing really doesn't feel the best. This thing isn't working for me. This thing isn't, you know, being part of my higher good. So answer the call. What is your soul calling you to do? So I feel like just with the theme of this reading, you can free write on that, but this is, you know, what is your soul calling you to do can also be things around like what patterns are you being called to let go of? What are you, what are you being called to grow into? What are you being called to change in your life? So what is your soul calling you to do? Again, just give yourself permission to grow and change and just give yourself permission to be like, if I didn't have this like repeated habit in my life over and over again, who would I be? What's, what's possible? Who, what time, what time? Well, I guess what time, what, what kind of person do I want to be if all this time from the past hadn't added up and, you know, accumulated into this new thing in my life. Right. So what's your soul, soul calling you to do? That can also include things to let go of things that, you know, you don't habits you don't want to carry forward. Um, and just things that, you know, again, this don't let, don't let the past hold you back card, just things that, you know, we thought, who am I, if I don't have this thing, or if I'm not this thing, it's like, well, you get to find out. It's amazing. It's an amazing part of life. Um, and it is just a lot of ways that we can, uh, move forward with that. Okay. Then we have past life healing, forget me not. Situation has been triggered by one of your past lives. Heal the past and you bring healing, heal the past and you bring healing into the present. So if past lives, like an actual past life is not part of your belief system, you know, we actually do exist as many selves in this lifetime. Like, so in this physical body, we do experience many lives. I'm sure there's chapters of your lives where you're like, who, what, who was that? Who was I then with all of this? Okay. So again, just this really a lot of energy about the past year for you guys in group four. So if past lives do resonate for you, then, you know, you can include that. But if not, just know that there's so many things. We get to be so many versions of ourselves in this one physical body, in this one lifetime. And so this energy, um, you know, this past life healing is just like, sometimes we're scared to let go of a habit or change or, you know, grow in that way because we're like, again, 
well, all this wounding was connected to it, or this was a survival mechanism I used from this certain thing, or this was, I don't know what the story is. You know, you, you know better than I do, obviously. So just remembering that, you know, when you, when you heal the past and you realize, oh, that was a thing I needed to get through that particular time in my life, or that was a thing that was part of my life during this thing, you know, you can let that go and be like, oh, I'm safe now. Here I am in, you know, in June of 2022 or whenever you're watching this. And like, this is, you know, this is a thing I can give myself permission to, like, I can be myself now in this setting, in this space. And I don't need to, you know, completely rely on, on these old situations to, you know, do my, to, to, to direct how I show up in this day-to-day -day life, right? I can change. It's safe for me to change. Okay. And then let's look at one of these cards. Okay. Heart opening to the divine. So really beautiful. So I feel like, again, what I was talking about before with like, when you get sick of your own shit, that's when you're like, okay, I'm ready to change now. So just let your heart be open to the guidance you get to, again, like maybe you just get a little image or a little flicker or a little whatever of like, okay, this is the way that I want to grow and expand in my life. This is the way that I can feel I'm being pushed to grow on, on a certain level or on a certain path. So just trusting trusting that guidance to come into your heart and trusting that, you know, you don't have to, you can trust and lean into that more than you have to trust and lean into like, oh, well, this is the way I was in the past. So this is the way, um, you know, I'm always going to be. Um, then we have soothing impatience for your affirmation for your last card. So there's nothing to do but wait. <laughs> okay, so this is everyone's favorite advice, including my own. And I mean, least favorite when I say favorite. So there's nothing to do but wait. So I feel like sometimes, you know, if you, if this reading resonated for you and you have all this momentum of like, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to do this differently. This is how I'm going to change. This is what's going to happen. Da, 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 da. Okay. So um, there's nothing to do with weight. Just means like, as long as you're doing your part and as long as you decide, like, I don't want the past to hold me back anymore. And I do want to move forward. And I do want to, you know, just one thing at a time, just know that you can't control everything. You can't make everything happen immediately. We can't make everything happen just because I decided I'm ready to be different now. So it's all going to happen right away. Okay. That's not how, it's not how earth works. It's not how this reality works. So there's nothing to do, but wait is really just remembering, like do what you can do and give the rest to God and don't try to force it or control it or manage it or any of that, because we just always end up being heartbroken when we do that. And instead just remembering there's nothing to do but wait, but there's nothing wrong with that. And things will unfold in their time and we will learn our lessons in the time we have to learn them. And, you know, you can, you can release all of that as needed. Okay. That's everything I have for you. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today. If you ever want any more information about me, all that is linked below. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful day.